the Bible says, but you are come unto Mount Zion. And I've taught you severally that Mount Zion is the church. Mount Zion is the church. We have Mount Sinai. And we have Mount Zion. So when you hear Mount Zion or Mount Sinai, it talks about the mountain God took the children of Israel through. And when you hear Mount Zion, it talks about the church. Okay. The Bible says you have come unto Mount Zion. And this scripture revealed to us some of the things we'll find when we gather in Mount Zion. If you go to Mount Sinai, you see things like smoke and all manner of encounters the children of Israel had in Mount Sinai. But when you come to Mount Zion, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, reveals to us what happens. He said, but you have come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God. Number one is the church. Number two is that that place you have come is a city. And it's the city of the living God. Number three is, it says, the heavenly Jerusalem. It means that this number three is that we have come unto the heavenly Jerusalem. Now we have the earthly Jerusalem. Praise God. But the church is number one, Zion. Number two, the city of of God, all right, and then number three is the heavenly Jerusalem, not the earthly Jerusalem. So you 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 can as well say I'm in Jerusalem, but you are not in the earthly Jerusalem, you are in the heavenly Jerusalem. Are we moving together? Okay. He says to an innumerable company of angels. Write it down. That's the fourth one. You see, the reason I'm showing you this is so that when we gather this way, you know some of the components that are found in our gathering. That's why in the gathering in church or gathering of believers, upon that mountain, everything is made possible. All right? It says, to an innumerable company, company of angels. So when we gather this way, we come to an innumerable gathering of angels. So beyond the people we are seeing physically, there are angels everywhere in this house. It says to the general assembly. So number what? Number four, number five. Okay, let's go again. Number one is is Mount Zion, which is the church. Number two, we are defining the church now. The church is Mount Zion. Number two, the church is the city of the living God. Okay? Number three, the church is the heavenly Jerusalem. Number four, the church, in the church, we have innumerable companies of angels and number five the bible says is to the general assembly to the general assembly which is so you write the general assembly is, is an assembly is an assembly and it says the general assembly and church of the firstborn so is the church remember the church is owned by Jesus. He says, I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail over it. It means that no man owns the church. So Jesus is the owner of the church. Okay? He says to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. It means that someone can be in that gathering and yet physically and yet in the realm of the spirit is not numbered among those who have gathered. So he says, the ones that are recognized in that gathering 
are the ones that their name are written in heaven okay and he says to the god to god the judge of all that's number what number seven so inside that gathering you have god and the bible defined the aspect of god you can see in that gathering is that god is the judge all right so inside that gathering we have god as a judge and he says to that's number eight is it eight or seven number eight it says unto the spirit of just men made perfect it means that when we gather physically we as well have the spirit of just men made perfect gathered in that meeting so each time we gather this way we have people like elijah gather with us we have people like elisha gather with us see the problem is that we have trained the church to behave spiritually or to behave spiritual even when they are canal i come again we have trained the church to behave spiritual even when they are canal because when we become spiritual we begin to gain access even physically to some of these things we find in church when we gather we can begin to have encounters with some of these spirits that gathers with us it means that we can gather this way and we'll have somebody tell us that i just saw elijah in the service these are the possibilities that are in every gathering where you see believers gather but because we are carnal we are we are more carnal than, than we are spiritual none of us is actually assessing that bless blessings that comes from the church so when you meet someone who wants to claim to be spiritual and he you, you hear his definition of being spiritual that's not what we are talking about we are talking about someone entering church and having that understanding there are angels gathering having the understanding that the spirit of just men made perfect are gathered in that you have that understanding there's a knowing in your spirit that this thing is not just a fairy tale that these are the realities that can be found amongst us as believers so we have the spirit of just men no matter you may remember the bible says wherever two or three are gathered in my name says i'm there is a definition once god is here every other thing within this scripture is found in that place so we have the spirit of just men made perfect they are there it means that you can buy into the spirit of everybody who have gone ahead of you it means you can encounter everyone who has gone ahead of you it means as well you can see them you can interact with them you can interact with their spirit each time we gather in a service this way but because we are too carnal some of these realities are before us and we don't encounter it you hear somebody go to mountain to look for the things that are found within our gathering If we begin to assess these things you see that there, we, we will now assess a lot of possibilities the reason it's looking like darkness is looking strong in our days is because we are raising a we are raising a church that is more carnal than a spiritual church we no longer understand the counsel the counsel of the lord all we know is this one can prophesy this one can heal the sick this one that's not what we are talking about here we are talking about assessing the realities that are made bare to us and then if you go to verse 24 which is actually the place i want to pin my teaching tonight it says unto jesus it means that in that gathering jesus is a mediator remember god appeared as a judge but there's a mediator too it means there is an intercessor for you there is someone that can intercede for you there's someone that as well can give access to the ones who are not really numbered among the ones that are in heaven so he says and to jesus the mediator of the new covenant is the is the one that initiated the new covenant he's the one that gets people into it he initiated it and he's the one that opens the door for anyone to access it 
He says that, that one will be found in that gathering. And he says, and to the blood. So it means that the blood is, is a personality. I come again. There's a gathering. And in that gathering, the Bible defines that when you come into that gathering, you see God, the judge. And the Bible says, when you come into that gathering, you see the general assembly. You are part of the general assembly. So we are gathered. So if I come here and I see the general assembly, it's a definition that God, who is the judge of all, is part of that gathering too. Are we understanding it? Okay. And he says that place you've come is Mount Sinai. Mount Zion, sorry. And he says it's a city. So beyond, the, it, it might be a little auditorium, but that place is a city. And he says it's a city of the living God. So when we gather, we are not gathered in an auditorium, we are gathered in a city. So physically we are in an auditorium, but if you gain access to the realities that are found in the spirit, you know you are in the city. Ah, it's looking like you are not understanding. So, we gather in a city, and in that city, God is a judge, and God is here. In that city, Jesus, who is a mediator, is here. In that city, the church, the general assembly, which is the church of Jesus, a part of that gathering. But, he says in that gathering, the spirit of just men made perfect too can be found there. It means that everyone who has gone ahead of you is in that service. And he says beyond that, there is a blood. So, the gathering we have here is a gathering of personalities. It's a gathering of beings that can talk. That can express their will. Or express their feeling. But he says in that place, there's a personality you must not neglect. He said that one is called the blood of sprinkling. And he says that one talks. So it's the blood of sprinkling that speaks. Oh, someone is not understanding. So when we come into the, the, the courtroom, God is the judge in the courtroom. Jesus is the mediator in the courtroom. But the blood speaks as well in the courtroom and he says that that blood does not just speak anything but speaks better thing than the blood of abel so if you want to understand the blood of abel we have to travel to what happened between abel and cain and everybody here knows the story of cain and abel how cain killed abel and then the blood he, he killed abel and he felt he has He's done with everything. He felt, without knowing that the blood, the, the life of everything is in the blood. It means that that blood is what defines the life. Is anyone understanding? So he killed, he closed up everything, thinking that nobody has seen him. Yet when God descended and was asking him, Cain, where is your brother Abel? Cain said, Am I my brother's keeper? Yet the blood on the ground was crying. So that Abel's blood was crying judgment, was speaking judgment. Yet there is another blood that the Bible is trying to introduce you now to. Now, the one of Abel is saying, judge him, he has sinned. Judge him, he has done this. Judge him, is And the Bible is introducing us to another blood we can take advantage of when we come in the garden, which is that Mount Zion. I says is the blood of sprinkling so in that gathering there is a personality that most times we don't recognize but that personality is the blood and it says is the blood of sprinkling that speaketh a better thing than the blood of Abel. so the blood has a mouth the blood can talk the blood can talk And there is a blood that is speaking a better thing. A better thing. A better thing.
someone lift up your hands in the next few minutes can you pray lord cause my eyes to understand cause my eyes of understanding to be enlightened emmanuel emmanuel i want to see you i want to hear from you today emmanuel emmanuel i want to see you i want to hear from you today emmanuel emmanuel we want to see you we want to hear from you emmanuel Marana Masuburu do Sagada Emmanuel We want to see you We want to hear from you again Emmanuel Emmanuel We want to see you we want to hear from you. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. We want to see you. We want to hear from you. Now, when we talk about the blood having a capacity to speak, we must understand some of the languages that the blood can speak so we can take advantage of the blood per time but he says this one speaks a better thing than the blood of Abel. it means that everything the blood of Abel has to offer is not to be compared to what the blood of sprinkling can offer everything every shout you can hear from the blood of abel cannot as well be compared to the shout that you are hearing per time from the blood of sprinkling number one thing the blood of sprinkling speaks is justification and remission justification in hebrews chapter 9 verse 12 neither by the blood of goats of ca or calves but by his own blood he's talking about the blood of jesus he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption so the blood speaks justification speaks eh? remission as well speak redemption is the same thing is the same so remember it, it it this place is taking you back to the story of what happens when the tabernacle was built and in that tabernacle you dare not go in without letting the blood speak because the blood is the only thing that can give you access to that tabernacle so as you are walking in there's a, an altar of sacrifice where these things are slaughtered that's the first thing you you faced but if, if the priest must have to go into the holies of holies to make sacrifice which most times is just once a year the priest goes into the or the high priest not even the priest goes into the holies of holies to make sacrifice and that once he dare not enter there without the blood you see him first he will slaughter the blood of animal and use it for the remission of the sin of the entire nation so he goes first to confess the sin of the nation when he's done he confesses his own sin and he gets the blood places it on some part of his body so that the blood can be speaking while he enters the holies of holies so any day the priest makes mistake and enter the holies of holies without going by the blood 
because the blood should be shouting <laughs> in such a way that the priest can enter and God will not perceive his sin. But the Bible says there is a better one now. He says neither by the blood of goats. So it's no longer with the blood of goats. It's no longer with the blood of calves. But by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal. So it means that what this blood of sprinkling speaks is eternal redemption. Eternal justification. Eternal. Nothing can change it. It won't wake up one day and say, it's no longer speaking at all. It means that even your children are born will come to meet the blood speaking because he spoke once and it's an eternal language. So the only way you can assess redemption, the only way you can assess salvation, justification from your sin is that that blood speaks loud upon you. And Jesus is saying that when we gather, the Bible is saying that when we gather in the church, that the blood is there. Because the blood wants to speak on your behalf. Even when God is there to judge, he appears as a judge. Remember I told you that God reveals himself in two ways. He reveals himself as a father and he reveals himself as what? As a judge. As a father, he is a loving father. As a judge, he is no longer emotional. So as a, as a father, you, you can always fall rise, fall rise, he forgives you, you cry, say, I forgive you, I'm your father. But you see, there is a place you will get to and then you will see him, who is a judge. He said, I'm forgiving you, but because I'm a judge, I will not be able to give you this access you are looking for. And then you know that the last time God is going to appear, he's going to appear as a judge. That time he will no longer be emotional. It means people will cry, forgive me, king of the whole world. He will, that will not get to his emotion. Because that time is no longer a father he is now what a judge do we understand it so that judge appears in every service in every gathering every believers gathering we have that judge in appearance but the bible says each time that judge appears we should as well expect the one that dilutes the heart of the judge which is the blood of sprinkling It means that there is nothing that you would want to get when we gather this way that you cannot get if you understand the speaking of the blood of sprinkling that speaketh a better thing than the blood of heaven. And that blood spoke once. And since then, that voice has been echoing. It's been echoing, forgive their sin. Forgive their sin. Forgive their iniquity. Forgive their iniquity. If you don't take advantage of it, you will one day realize that self-righteousness cannot take you anywhere. If there's anything you must obtain from God, it will not be obtained by your self-righteousness. It will be obtained by the understanding of the speaking of that blood or sprinkling. Is anyone understanding what I'm saying? Now, if we go to 1 John chapter 1 verse 7, he said, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another if we walk in the light as he walks in the light we're going to be having fellowship one with another it means that if we want to have fellowship with god we must come as light not as darkness because darkness cannot comprehend light so the only way we can have fellowship is that that fellowship is through light because he is not just dwelling in light he is the light. And Jesus as well says, we as well dwells in light and we as well the light. So he says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus, he talks about that same blood of sprinkling. His son cleanses us from all sin. It means that the only way we, we keep shining as a light is that we understand the ministry of the speaking of the blood. Each time that blood speaks upon us, there's a purification. We are made whole to have 
continuous fellowship with the father if you are not understanding me let me see your hand up you are not understanding please be bold though we are in the school <laughs> don't say i'm understanding whereas you are asking yourself where are we driving to where 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 is this car moving us if you know you are not understanding let me see your hand up okay someone lift up your hand and say the blood the blood of sprinkling is speaking on my behalf say it like you mean it's saying the name of jesus the blood of sprinkling is speaking on my behalf if you read matthew chapter 26 verse 28 he said for this is my blood of the new testament it means every every testament has the blood upon it the old testament the blood that introduced us to the old testament is the blood of goats the blood of bulls the blood of calves but yet the new testament here must have to be sealed by the blood and you know that most times when a testament is written it is the blood of the testator that is used to seal it what it means is that if your father writes a will now that will is not active until your father dies do you understand what i'm saying it means that every will is made active the day the person dies so no matter how you are in a house to take that which has been written about you in the will you cannot assess it until the man who wrote the will dies do we get what i'm saying so the only way to assess the will because we are talking about the new te old testament testament is the will testament is the covenant the will so god has two co two covenants with men one is the old two is what the new if you want to assess the old covenant you assess it by the blood of bulls you assess it by the blood of goat but if you now want to assess the, the new covenant and the blessedness that comes from the new covenant, you have to now go to understand who is the testator. Is the testator dead? If the one who wrote it is not dead, you cannot assess what is inside. So what Jesus did was that after he was done with the New Testament, he died. And that's what the Bible is showing us here. So that blood introduced us to the new testament to the new will even that if there is anything that is found in the new testament you can assess it you can leave it you can have it you can be a testament to that only if you understand the process with which that testament can be activated and the only way it can be activated is by invoking the blood because each time you want to assess what is written a question will be thrown to you from which door are you coming is anyone understanding what i'm saying so if the door is not that blood or sprinkling that speaketh the better thing than the blood of Abel, you will not assess what is written there i heard the preacher say that there is nothing like divine health that as long as you are alive you are wearing the flesh that you cannot live in health see when you see people who are new age preachers run from them because the person can look at what is written in the bible clearly and want to preach you out of it by either his personal experience or the experiences of others even if i get sick today i will i will be sick on the altar and be preaching that we are not supposed to be sick because what is written is not my may not be my experience now but I should not preach my experience. I should preach what is written. Because the church that Jesus is coming to rapture is the church that have fully gained access to what is written, not to what we are feeling. I might be sick. I go to the hospital and receive injection. It doesn't cancel the fact that we should not be sick. So a generation will come in revelation to a point that they will assess the reality of that. And we, maybe some of us who are now living in a generation or or forcing ourselves away by our belief system from the blessedness that is found in the new testament we stay in heaven and we'll come into the service like the spirit of just men made perfect we'll hear young brothers telling you now i am 80 and since i was born i have never taken paracetamol 
Another one will say, I'm 200 years. And someone is saying, in this same world I passed through. See, the revelation of the next generation will always, <laughs> will always make mess of whatever you think you know. Because God is in progress. As long as you walk with God, you will always know him better. There is not no language like I know God. We are all knowing God. They that do know their God. That do is continuous. They that do is not they that knew their God. That do, they are in the process of knowing. He said those ones will be strong. And their after effect is that they will do what? They will do exploit. So the Bible shows us in Matthew chapter 26 verse 28. That the blood... He says, for this is my blood of the new testament. That new covenant. New will. <laughs> Malakato Pradia. So it means that when I appear and say, the blood of Jesus. It means that what I'm calling on is everything that is written in that will that I should assess. If you don't understand this, you won't know how to enter. If someone's parents or someone's father writes a will and the father is dead. He goes to call a lawyer who is the one that wrote the will and the lawyer will have to come and read the will. And all of us will have to see the, the, the signature of our father on that will to be sure lawyer have not changed it. And any day there is any contest against the things you received from your father, you don't go crying. You go calling back that lawyer and calling back that documented will we have to go reading what is written in that will is anyone understanding what i'm saying and if the lawyer appears with the will there won't be any argument against you this is written here that this property is belonging to me that's the same illustration when you say the blood of jesus the blood of jesus is a seal on the will of the new testament so when you want to assess anything written or anything given to you in the New Testament, the blood must give you access. It means by the blood, I live in health. You don't understand that? It means by the blood, I live in victory over causes. It means by the blood, I live in victory over poverty. It means by the blood, I live in victory over everything Jesus paid for. Someone can you say the blood of Jesus? So the blood is a seal on the testament. But the Bible says that that blood has a mouth. It means that when you come to the courtroom and you say the blood, it's like you are calling a lawyer. And when the blood comes here, it begins to speak a better thing, more than the blood of Abel. In short, it was because the blood that, the highest blood in Old Testament was the blood of Abel. Because every other blood that spoke was the blood of animals. It was the blood of Abel that spoke loud from the earth and caught the attention of God from heaven. And that one became the highest when, when, when placed in hierarchy in Old Testament. It was better than the blood of good. It was better than, as filthy as that blood, it was better than the blood of calves. But the Bible is telling you that beyond this blood, which is, which is rated the highest in Old Testament, in New Testament there is another blood that speaks better it means that if he can speak better thing than the blood of Abel, it is speaking better thing than the blood of goats, bulls, and rams. Anyone sacrificing any of those things now is taking himself back to somewhere worse than where the one of Abel was. Whereas we have upgraded to the blood of sprinkling. Someone lift up your hands. I speak over your life in the name of Jesus. By the blood, every judgment sees now. I didn't hear your voice. By the blood, every judgment sees now. In the name of Jesus. So, we have noted that the blood is a seal over the New Testament. Are we understanding it? Okay. Then, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. And almost all the things are by the law purged with the blood. And without shedding of blood, is no remission it means that the remission of sin is only through the what through the shedding of what of the blood are we understanding me 
It means that the only way sin is remitted is through what? Through what? What is remitter? Huh? You say what? Re, re, I think remitter is a document that represents money. It means that you can go to bank to pay your school fees. You give them money, they give you that remitter in exchange for your money. And then you can take that remitter to school and offer it to them, then they give you receipt. They have not seen money, but that thing you have in your hand is an every days that you have deposited money into the account. Are we understanding it? That's the same way the blood is remitter. It means that you may not have the blood physically, but when you call on the blood, it becomes a representative of everything that Jesus has offered in New Testament. Is anyone getting blessed? Is anyone getting blessed? So in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness. So Jesus is a faithful witness. <laughs> he is a faithful witness. And the first begotten of the dead. Number one, he is the first witness. Number two, he is the first person to resurrect from the dead. So he all until then, nobody resurrected. Everybody remained down. <laughs> so the question is, where were they going to? That's not our topic today. <laughs> Are we going there? So let's leave that matter. Let's not dive into that now. <laughs> so Jesus became the first begotten. The first. From the dead. And the Bible gave him another rank. He says, the prince of the kings of this earth. Haya <laughs> kapataya. So in his ranking, he's above, he's above all the kings of the earth. And moreover, I understand that the kings, the Bible is recognizing here, is not the kings you know. That your village king and all those kings. No, that's not the one. If that's the where, where your mind is going to, that's you are, where why we are driving into your carnality your car we have become so carnal that when we read the only thing you see is that your king in your village drinking alcohol no that's not the kind of king we're talking about so jesus is the prince of the kings remember we are called into the kingdom of kings and priests so by salvation we have been coronated kings it means i'm a king by salvation and i'm a priest by salvation, by coronation that happened at salvation, I have become a king, I have become a priest, and Jesus is a prince over me. Someone did not understand that. You didn't understand that. So I have a prince, I have a supervisor over me. I am a king, but I don't have absolute rulership over the things I do. I am a king, but I don't have permission to do everything. Because that same king is under authority. And the authority I'm under is the prince. Authority of the prince. And the Bible called that prince Jesus. Is anyone understanding what I'm saying? So, okay. Let's do this. Say, say with me, I'm a king. Say with me, I'm a king. Say, I'm a king. And I'm under the rulership of Prince Jesus. It means we don't have complete autonomy. <laughs> we don't have complete autonomy. That's why our movement is in him. In him we move. In him we live. It's in him. Until we fabricate ourselves into him, we can't have a being. If you are living outside him, outside his intention, outside his wills, outside the things he wants for you, or oh God, you are not living. The only way you can begin to have life and live life is that you find yourself inside him and all your expression are through jesus is anyone understanding what i'm saying so we are under authority we don't wake up to do what we want to do there is a spirit that speaks to us say my sheep heareth my voice it means that if you are not hearing that voice telling you this way this way this way this way <laughs> We, we question where you are coming from so if that voice is not there to guide you how dare you now come and say you have a portion in the new covenant 
so the bible called jesus in ranking the prince of the kings of this earth so we are kings of the earth we own the earth but there's a king or there's a prince there's a supervisor over our assignment and the bible now says unto him that loved us so jesus's love is past tense <laughs> do you understand it whenever the bible wants to refer to his past that love does it means that that love started before you were born it's not because you are looking fair that jesus started loving you so the carnal law we must see the face of this damn self we must see the face of the man we must see how far is he fine is he not fine it means that that love is only initiated by the things we see but the one jesus gave to us was given before we appear so he said unto the one who loved us and then because he loved us he washed us from our sin in his own blood so both the love and the wash is past tense so that love for god so loved the world that he gave that love brought about the washing of the of the sin is anyone hearing what i'm saying it means that if i commit sin now and i ask for repentance now and i come by the blood of jesus now it is written that my sin has been forgiven it is not based on how much effort i will put now that will bring the, that forgiveness it has been forgiveness it's just for me to know the technology of assessing what has happened do you understand what i'm saying and that technology is in applying the blood is in applying the blood of sprinkling so there are ways to apply it one is by repentance two is by calling on that blood upon yourself there is by going through the pathway of brokenness and if you don't understand some of this technology that is why you can hear people tell you you can sin your sin forever is forgiven yesterday today and forever is forgiven that's a partial truth is a partial truth <laughs> oh is a partial truth yes because why i say it's a partial truth because by this by the word by scripture it is clear to us that our sin yesterday has our sin we are forgiven even before we were born but you see the problem with that truth is the same problem with saying we have paracetamol that can cure malaria and because we have that paracetamol i have malaria i don't need to take paracetamol for having malaria i'm still healed until you find yourself in mortuary you now realize oh this malaria there is a technology to making this paracetamol work in my system do you understand what i'm saying and that technology is taking the paracetamol and drinking it so if someone tells you that you can commit sin you don't need to ask for forgiveness there is a judge there's a judge it's like someone saying you can be sick be, remember i'm not advertising drug i'm just using illustration so it's like someone telling you you can be sick but don't take drug you you still be healed remember what i said is an illustration do you understand because we as well believe that there's another route through which you can get healing which is by the finger of god you can as well live in divine health we understand all those things but because of this teaching i use this illustration you are sick and someone is saying you don't need to go to hospital the drugs have been produced they are out there in pharmacy so because the drugs are in pharmacy is an evidence that you are healed <laughs> and moreover when you hear anybody preach such thing just know they are looking for a cover for their life because they are living in the same and the only way they could cover it up is to make preach everybody within their environment to now see it as normal thing if you are in such a place the bible says come out from among them <laughs> ah. in ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood someone lift up your hands i'm redeemed through his blood please are you understanding me tonight lift up your hands again say i'm redeemed by the blood say i am redeemed by the blood say in the name of jesus my redemption is by the blood <laughs> don't you know that the coronation of every native doctor is by the blood 
Every genuine priest is coronated by the blood. And they know the day that coronation happened. I've taught you in each other that if you are joining an occultic group, and that occultic group does not have blood as one of the access part, I say you have joined your village meeting. If you go to any shrine and the native doctor say, here we don't do blood, tell the native doctor you don't have power. Because anywhere spirits dwell, blood must be seen. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the coronation of every native doctor of every genuine occultic group is through the blood. Is through the, the only problem is that the blood they go through is through that one that is lesser than the blood of Abel. So when you see a native doctor saying they want to make sacrifices on your behalf, and by this sacrifice they want to bring destruction or destruction upon you, put your hand in your pocket and laugh. You know why? By understanding. You are in calf, goat, and bulls. And bulls. Even if you decide to upgrade to the blood of a human, the Bible as well says that the, the ranking of Abel is still better than the blood of that human you are using. And the blood that is speaking on our behalf is better than the blood of Abel. So when you want to make sacrifice for me, against me, I will ask you, which blood? You will say, it is the blood of one virgin. I will put my hand in my pocket and say, you don't understand. The blood that went for me is the, prince, the blood of the prince of the kings of this world. In his ranking, is above. The Bible says he's a, he has an eternal, eternal language coming from his mouth. And that language is, speaks, speaks better than the blood of Abel. So if someone now comes with the blood of animal, and saying your business should close the question is which blood is speaking if someone kills a virgin and that blood is that virgin is against you maybe to destroy your family the question is which blood is speaking if that blood is not the blood of sprinkling go your way he has wasted his life is anyone understanding what i'm saying you know halakai basuka so People with this understanding can now go making sacrifices on our behalf. And when they are done with their sacrifice, the next day will come out. Because the problem with or the positive thing with the blood of sprinkling is that he spoke. That speaking is a continuous speaking. The speaking is speaking in the past. The speaking is speaking in the now. And the speaking is speaking in the future so the bible call it eternal speaking it means that the language of that blood is eternal oh god of heaven you don't understand where i'm coming from so when anybody who if you get this thing there is no enchantment that will come against you there is no enchantment do you know that it was the blood of a, the blood of goats that these people were using and yet the bible says that enchantment cannot come against jacob that definition cannot come against Israel. So it means that with the blood of God, God ranked that God to a point that the God had the capacity to represent the entire nation. And with that blood, someone can go somewhere and do something against Israel and he says there is no definition against them. Because there's a blood speaking. And whereas God came down himself and offered his blood eternally on your behalf. And yes, someone can be in church and tell me my business is going down because someone somewhere offered good, traveled, traveled beyond the blood of Abel. It means that the blood of Abel has a higher ranking than any blood of animal. The blood of Abel has a higher ranking than the blood of any human being. Whereas the Bible is saying that we have a better blood than the blood of Abel. That's why we walk in dominion. That's why no devil can do anything against us. That's why someone can plan to kill us. We know they are planning, but they can't do anything. Because they have lost the power to do that. It, the only way you can gain the power to come against us and it will, it will come upon us is by going to get an alignment with the blood of sprinkling and the funny thing is that when you come there, you'll find me inside. And because I'm there, I'm secured above, I'm secured from every darkness 
every wickedness, every death that the devil can offer. So the devil can be angry against this young boy, but you can't do me anything. You know why I am secured by the speaking of the blood. I am. Someone you didn't understand what I'm saying. Do you know that Job, Job, Job was almost gone? Job was almost gone until that blood. You know, Jesus was offered from the foundation of the world. Are you aware? It was that blood that became the rescue to Job. He said, Deliver him from going down the pit. He said, I found the ransom. I found the ransom. We are not aware. That's why believers are weak because they don't know what they carry. They don't know the blood that is speaking. So, as you are walking now, nowhere, anywhere you find yourself, there's a voice speaking on your behalf. And that's the voice of the blood of sprinkling that speaks a better thing than the blood of heaven. All I need to do is to be in alignment with that blood. As I'm coming out in the house, it is speaking. As I'm in, as I'm in the car traveling, it is speaking. And you see, the only thing that is not permitted to happen to you is the thing that is not found in the that is found in the new testament if it is not found in that testament that is sealed by that blood of sprinkling if it's happening to you don't say god is judging you god cannot test you with the things that are not in the way <laughs> someone lift up your hands I, I, I feel i feel you you don't get it it means i can travel now and and I'm secure traveling, knowing that accident cannot happen. It means that I, as I'm journeying through life, I am secure knowing that I cannot die young. You know why? There's a blood that speaks a better thing than any other blood that can be found as long as the entire universe is concerned. I am no and if you read Hebrew chapter 10 verse 19 the Bible says that blood gives us boldness to the presence of God so when we want to assess the glory the presence of God the Bible says having therefore brethren boldness it means when I come I come boldly not because of my self-righteousness but because I have obtained the speaking of a blood and then by that I can assess the presence of God without fear. Someone lift up your hands. Say, there's a blood. Say with me, there is a blood. And this blood speaks a better thing than the blood of bulls, than the blood of goats, than the blood of animals. Say, the blood speaks a better thing than the blood of ever. So, from this day on, when you go, sir, and you hear anybody threatening you you see the other day we saw some whether i don't know the kind of sacrifice that is they gathered lizard they tied the head with black they i think how many lizards were they there are many lizards they tied the head they tied the hair with black they broke egg they broke in front of this place while i came i saw it I stood by it, I said, in the name of Jesus, I dismantle whatever has been done here. And if it is done against anybody, maybe those leaders are representing human, they tie their face. I said, in the name of Jesus, as a priest, I untie you. You see, whoever did that sacrifice will only realize, because I as well drop judgment for coming around this territory to do it. Whatever you have declared upon it goes back to you. It means that the person will now go home and realize that what he actually planned to happen to someone is already a portion that is in the house. How did this technology change? Someone who understood that there is another blood that can speak a better term than the blood of lizard spoke over it. And when I was done with my own technology, I simply told, I think I told you and Nduku, I said, go and push it into the gutter because it's useless now it's not no longer anything that is to tell you that someone can come and offer a goat to a deity and you are permitted to take the goat and kill it and the deity has no power over you because as long as we are concerned once that blood is speaking on your behalf 
no deity has a high authority over you what it simply means is that if you understand the speaking of the blood or sprinkling that no devil on earth we have dominion over it. I don't care to know the doc, native doctor or to know the shrine or what. I, no matter where the thing is done, I can I don't even need prayer to dismantle it. Because see, it is not your prayer that brings you to the reality. Understand it because religiously we pray. Because when you pray religiously, you can see something. You you jump back. And now want to do you want to pray that is still that carnality we are talking about because in your carnal nature you think is the same way your native doctors behave you know when they see they, they go to recharge they say hey hey they do one thing or the other then they come back they, they not have power to do no we each time you get any believer that believer is in his full capacity someone did not hear what i'm saying when we say you should pray we are not saying pray religiously it means that even if something happened and i did not pray it has not really re reduced my ranking there is a place I've, i'm occupying as a believer and somehow something happened and i did not pray there's no challenge anytime you see me i'm in the light anytime you see me i'm in fellowship anytime you see me the blood of sprinkling is speaking perpetually on my behalf so i don't need to go back recharging I don't as I see it, I dismantle it with my leg and I go my way like nothing happened. Is anyone hearing what I'm saying? If we understand this as the body of Christ, the devil will lose his power over us. How can you tell me you are a believer and demons are heralding around, are threatening you? Demons. If you hear some of the things some of these young believers has, uh, says with their mouth, a, a demon is my problem. The, the demon in my father's house is strong. How can you tell me this kind of thing? How can you not get into the reality of what has been offered to you in salvation? Because if you assess it, the day you get access to that thing, you realize that everything in the whole of the universe will separate themselves from you. You know why? You have been brought into light. And light shineth in darkness. The Bible says, the darkness comprehended you know what comprehension means understand it it means that darkness cannot understand the operation from that day on it means that there will be comprehension in in the mind of darkness as long as you are you are living they can bury something in your house you will come and make their understanding unfruitful they bury something before you you match it and you move on and they they are watching you know it, it's not like they were, they were watching you in the mirror when you matched it. <laughs> Only to realize that instead of you matching and dying, you matched and they watch your life gauge. Ten years have been added. Where did they collect the ten years from? From his own life. That's why I know I won't die young. That's why I know I can't die like mortals. That's why I know I'm not, I can't fall sick like mortals. That's why I know things that stop others can't stop me. That's why I know, I know. The Bible says we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. It means that this one we say I'm a conqueror. The Bible says that where we are ranked is more than the conqueror reign. We are more than conqueror. We are more than them. You can conquer in darkness but the language we use in our in our realm is beyond conquering you know why we are more than conquerors because we are we our our battles have been conquered on our behalf so we come to the battle with victory it, it, have you ever seen such a thing you are coming to wrestling ground and you are carrying the cup okay why, where did you collect the cup you say you don't know i'm coming here to watch you finish i'm not coming to fight though. i'm coming to watch your finishing that's where we dwell or when you understand it you will now know how to take advantage of the ministry of the blood there's a blood you see since we dismantle that sometimes i dismantle things like that i'm waiting for reaction there can't be reaction <laughs> there cannot be reaction because if it's powerful it's your react some years ago i i went 
to some in my village i destroy some of the shrines here till tomorrow they have not reacted till tomorrow the shrine could not say who broke it down yeah people are still bowing people are that's what people were bowing to because we take the power from those things and the power we are given you see all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me and with that same authority is i coronate you as my father sent me even so send i you it means that when i go i'm going with all authority in heaven all authority on earth all authority beneath the earth and yet with this kind of authority a believer is saying the demon is threatening him you know what i know this night if you get understanding of what i'm saying in the next five minutes you can dismantle everything that has been done in your family every negative thing that has been done against your destiny you can dismantle it. stop being stop being stop being weak stop being weak stop being weak the one who gave you this authority sir went to the headquarters of hell that is he went to the headquarters the headquarters he conquered great he, he collected the keys of hell he came out in victory and he said the same thing i coronate you it means that in your reality you went to hell in your reality you conquered hell in your reality you came out in victory and yet the one who came out in victory is seeing someone some some level of some tiny tiny demons that have not even gone into hell and they are saying hey and that guy is he said oh you want to kill me kill you what how i say, I say it everywhere if you think you have power go and try if you think you have authority try a believer try a believer i went to one village in cross river and they told me that here is terrible that everybody here is witch this one they kill this one they do this one this one they do this one i stood on on the platform there i said if you're a witch my name is Chukwi nothing go and try and I did not finish that public, you know, uh, tussle with them. And I go inside my room all through the night. Yakatakapa, yo, bo, bo, bo. I went back and slept. Because my victory is not in my prayer. Someone did not hear what I said. My victory is not. My victory is in the blood. Is in the death, the resurrection of Jesus. That's where my religion has finished us. So a, a believer believes, am I in any way saying you should not pray? No, no. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. My victory is not because some of you think it's your, you, if you hear where believers are praying, shakapo, ikatika, it they feel like it's you know we must fight. You hear them say, oh, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered. Are you the kingdom of God? Are you the kingdom and remember the, if you understand that scripture that scripture is not directed to battle he said the kingdom of god so forever is only the violent it means that the only way to take what belongs to you in this kingdom is to give violence and some of the ways to give violence is the, the strongest way to give violence is get violent in faith get a belief system hold on to it even in your death The Bible says, fight a good fight of faith. It means that the fight you should fight is actually a fight of faith. As long as you want to take anything that belongs to you in this kingdom, you must know how to maintain your faith. If we don't understand this, some of us would have been in the grave. But we laugh daily, we wake up daily, we walk around daily knowing that the devil has lost his power over us. We say it everywhere. You feel you have authority. Take a picture, put it in your calabash. <laughs> After all, we, we, are we hiding picture in this generation? Picture is everywhere. It's not a generation where hide picture. You go to Facebook, barricade, you a lot of picture. Sometimes people are inviting me, they're asking me where to get my picture. I'm feeling, are you happy? Are you okay? Picture is everywhere. <laughs> picture is collect the one you want 
Is it not a picture? Is it the, the what you can print it? Even your village machine can print the picture. Put it. The next morning, you go back there and see that that picture is your picture that is there. <laughs> Someone lift up your hands. Say, I'm a man of the spirit. And darkness cannot understand me. Hi! You are not saying this like you mean. Say, I'm a man of the spirit. And darkness cannot understand me. Say, darkness cannot understand my operation. Say, darkness cannot understand me. They can't understand my activities. I'm like a wind. I'm like a wind. That's what the Bible says. You do not understand the ways of the wind. So will you not understand the ways of this man who is a spirit man? Or a spiritual man? <laughs> we are like wings. Malika Parus Kavina Hataya. Someone lift up your say the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Say the blood speaks a better thing. Say the blood speaks a better thing. Say the blood speaks. Okay, I'm going to give you a few minutes. We're going to do some practical. Get your jota. Write down the things you need to dismantle now. Oh. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh. There's any 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 altar of darkness around you around your family you can stand there by the speaking of the blood you dismantle it so when, whenever we gather in the communion table we are not gathering to nothing we are not gathering to eat bread and wine we are not gathering to drink wine we are not gathering because we are hungry we are gathering to enter the realities of that blood, that blood that better than your covenant. So it means Jesus says, when you do this, do it in remembrance of me. It means that they, by doing this, you enter the reality of everything I died to offer. So we do not just come to eat. This is not just wine. This is not just bread. This is the blood of Christ. This is the body of Christ. And yet a lot, a lot of us don't understand that there, this, this thing you see here has a mystery behind it. And the mystery with the human understanding, you can't understand it. Then you call it bread, you eat it, you call it wine, you drink it. Yet, the power that this has is the power of the blood of sprinkling that speaks a better thing than the blood of Abel. So each time I approach the communion bread, each time I approach the communion table, I approach with that mentality. I'm here to remind my system that I'm still part of the covenant. I'm here to let everything around me know that I'm still a partaker of the blessing that Jesus died to offer. If Jesus died, I won't die to offer it again. If Jesus died, took, he, he was striped, he was beating for my sickness i cannot place my back to be beaten by malaria i can't place my back to be beaten again by sickness if he became poor that through him i will be rich i will not take my head for poverty no way no way someone became poor i should enter riches i should not be in poverty no way you say no i have to go through poverty to be rich what do you mean are you dying again are you trying to die again what I'm trying to make you understand is that it is not what you are doing that brings you into the reality. Someone did it and he released a blood that is speaking perpetually. That blood is a judge saying consistently that this thing has been handled. How can you remain poor? The, no economy of any nation can make me poor because I don't live by the economy of the nation. I live by the economy of the realm I dwell in. I refuse sicknesses. I reject sicknesses. I reject it with my life. You know why? It does where the real battle is. Rejecting the things you don't want. Rejecting the things Jesus died for. Each time I approach the communion table, 
I remind myself I cannot be sick. I remind myself I can't be poor. I can't be poor. That's nothing like I am poor I'm trying to be rich. No, I am rich. I am rich. My the reality of your riches is not in what you can see physically. It's not it. No, it is. It is a coronation. You are coronated. It. You see. See. Oh God of heaven. You don't know. You if you don't understand some of these things you think that is until you start having money that you are now becoming rich no that is carnality in the realm where we dwell there's a coronation that happened he made himself poor and because he was poor he says that I might is under probability it means that the battle I must have to fight is to become a reality to that poverty he took and the reality is that I'm rich the reality that he was tried he was beaten for your sake is that you are not sick the reality that you, he, you, you, you understood the fact that the same Jesus was hung on the tree on your behalf is that no man can curse you. So when you come and say, I curse you, I laugh. Because I can't be cursed. I have a reality that cannot curse me. You will never prosper. Ah, you, it's not me. Because we are dwell, it doesn't work. The only thing that works where I am is blessed. So the only thing that can work on me is you, you are blessed. <laughs> it's working. It's working. So I don't depend on the economy of the nation to determine whether I'm rich or not. I don't depend on the conditions of the world. They say there is COVID-20, COVID-20 to determine if I'll be healthy. Because I don't dwell in the realm where the world dwells. I I'm an ambassador here. If you go to any embassy, if you go to American embassy in Nigeria, if you cross the gate, you will feel like you are in America. Because everything in the environment is built to look like America. That is the world understanding what it means to be an ambassador. And if there is war now, no, no war within this country can enter any other nation's embassy. It means that if there is battle in Nigeria and you run into that American embassy, you are safe. Because this is not American battle. This is another nation in your country. The people working in American embassy in Nigeria are not paid by Naira or with Naira. They may be Nigerians working inside here, but because you are working in here, your salary you receive in dollars. The same way the Bible says you are an ambassador. It means that the condition of your environment on the earth is heaven. Jesus teaching them how to pray. Is our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be the name, thy kingdom come. It means understand you are an ambassador. Is that kingdom should come on earth as it is in heaven? A replicate of what is in heaven. We will build heaven on earth. We will build heaven on earth. Our environment, we, we carry the, the aura of heaven, even when we are on the earth. Understand it. But how do I assess this? You cannot assess it if you don't understand the speaking of the blood. If you don't understand because this speaking of the blood the understanding it will give to you is that it's not of he that will it no i there's no effort i need to even when i remain righteous it's not because i have ability to dodge sin no it's because i have actually understand or come to the understanding of the power that is in the blood and by that power a power has been given to me to live above sin so when we come to communion table it's not just a monthly affair or a weekly affair no no that's why even in my house we have communion i eat it in my house to remind myself too i will never be poor i will never be broke i will never be sick i will never i will never i can't die young because sometimes when we do this confession to you, you think, I confess myself into it. No, I'm reminding my system. It has happened already. It's just me I'm trying to help. The more I speak it, the more I tell my, I, I make this system understand that I know what I'm saying. I will never, never be poor. I will never lack what to use and take care of my family. I will never, never. It would have been possible if I'm not born again. 
It would have been possible if the blood has not risen upon me. A time will come and I will open a fountain to the house of Israel. That fountain has been opened. And say anyone that goes through it will be made whole of his sin. That's what it means. I will never. They say you are the head and not the tail. Above only. Above only and not beneath. You don't understand it. Above only. It means that the only position you have to occupy is the above position. Not the middle position, no. Not the middle position, not the tail position. I am above only. So wherever I walk, I walk with above mentality. Wherever I go, I go with the above mentality. Where, whatever I dare to do, I dare to do with the above mentality. There's a blood of sprinkling that speaketh a better thing. And it speaks a better thing than the blood of bulls, the blood of goats. And whatever blood they have offered against you, that blood speaks a better thing. It speaks a better thing. So when someone offers a sacrifice to you, celebrate because it's a trial. And that trial will always let them know that you are, you are, you are within a territory that nobody can touch. He said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. You know what a strong, not just a tower, a strong one. He said the righteous are inside it and they are saved. They are saved. I don't need to add block to the tower to make it stronger. The tower is already a strong tower. What do I need to do? I run in. And some of the things we are teaching you is the ways to run into the tower. The way to run into the strength of that tower. I'm going to give you some minutes. Some of you, you have to roar. You have to roar against darkness in your family. Roar against darkness in your... Listen, it, I, I may not have time will fail me to tell you some stories here. Time will fail me to tell you some of the things we conquered in our own family. Some of you, when you come to share to me some of the things happening in your family, I laugh. Because if I present my own, you will run. Yet we conquered it by this understanding. And funny enough, we, we, we didn't just conquer it, we conquered and sent all of them to the grave. And anyone who is willing to raise his head now, we should go down. So you must understand that that guy in the village who you think is against you, against your destiny, is because you too, you don't understand your reality. So a military man who doesn't know he's a military man will behave like a civilian. A king who doesn't know he's a king will behave like a normal person. So I give you some minutes. Can we rise and pray in the Holy Ghost? Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. See, understand that tonight is going to end a lot of darkness, both in your life, in your destiny, in your family. Tonight, if you actually have understanding of what we just taught you, a lot of things have changed for you. Open your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. Bringing everything. Yeah. Don't worry, can I pray? Pray, pray. Everybody should pray. Be conscious about. Look at. Listen. If there's any struggle in your own life, maybe there is a, an area the devil has conquered you. Bring the blood. Don't tell yourself, I have the power. I will discipline. You can't discipline yourself out of sin. The blood is the is the victory we have over sin. The blood is the victory we have over death. The blood is the victory we have over sickness. The blood is the victory we have over poverty. The blood is the victory. Come against it the right way tonight. I give you some minutes. Malakato Sabila Kafaradish. No, he didn't see Christ. Commanding everything to walk in obedience to Christ. Commanding everything in my life in obedience to Christ. Bringing everything, everything.
everything in my life in obedience so cry he's making everything everything in my life in obedience to Christ someone pray commanding everything in obedience to Christ he's the Holy Ghost he's the Holy Ghost Spirit of the living God he's the Holy Ghost Scepter of the King of Kings is the Holy Ghost, seal of the age to come. Commanding everything in my life in obedience to Christ. Commanding everything, everything in my life in obedience to Christ. Bring in everything in obedience to Christ. Malavaratusa kapata la kapati kapata. I I still feel in my spirit giving you some chance to pray. Raise the blood against that demon, against that darkness against that wickedness in your life against that wickedness in your family the blood of jesus the blood of jesus the blood of jesus the blood of jesus deliver my family for i found the ransom deliver my family for i found the ransom deliver my parents for i found the ransom Rata teke 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 toko pakata kalaka toko prakata asata laka teke preke teke teke toko prakati kalaka rata seke teke toko prakati kalaka e katika tika pakate ke teke 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 toko paka the blood the blood of Jesus Satan the blood is against you Satan the blood is against you over a boy state over my territory over this city the blood is against you over my family the blood is against you over their destinies the blood is against you over their families the blood is against you Satan take your hand off that belongs to us take your hand off the things that belong to our families that belongs to church that belongs to our members the blood is against you Makapala Kapati Karate sakate kaparata kate kalakai ata teke teke parania shala para fene di kaparatos the blood is against you 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 e kate kaparate in my health in my finances in my family in my business in my ministry in the church the blood is against you aparata e kapapate no toparate the war the battle you are raging against me i come against you with the blood aparata te kaparadia asata ta 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 so when you are not praying no I come against your devil, the blood, the battles, you are raging against me. I come against you with the blood. I see Babylon fall. I see darkness fall. I see darkness fall. I see darkness dismantle. I take a tick, a take a I see the agendas in your life, the agendas in your family. Dismantle, dismantle, dismantle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kiridi kalade shayada kere de korodosa. Ati kapa teki tu kupakati. Rata teke teki te kapa. Prosini mania kateko Palie ketekele Chiede ketekele Palatata katekete Over your finances The blood Over your family The blood Over your destiny The blood 
over your career the blood pakateke tika tika pakateke tukurudu zugudu jaya kateke tokorodos kidi kidi kalapala parateke teke teke someone take your victory tonight malika paratosa over your business every battle is dismantled by the blood over your destiny over your health over your children these battles are dismantled by the blood malana torodo soloko tosa dili di 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 ie de 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 pa ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta teke 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 te i bring stability to your health i bring stability to your finances i bring stability to your family let every darkness be dismantled let every darkness be dismantled by the blood by the blood by the blood paka teke teke tika taka ta karata ta parate e prata te 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 e prata te 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 katika paka tika taka tika e prata te 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 in your health darkness is dismantled in your family that darkness is dismantled in your destiny darkness is dismantled I see darkness dismantle in this house. I see wickedness dismantle over your family, over your destiny, over your children. I see darkness dismantle. Makateke pika la parata in pratakate by the blood of sprinkling that speaketh a better than the blood of Abel. I bring the blood over you. I bring the blood over your family. I bring the blood over your destiny. I bring the blood over your finances. Ay, 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 ay. Someone listening to me, that battle is over by the blood. That battle is over by the blood. You will realize that the battle has ended just by the mystery of the blood of Jesus. Kapateke di kapaka. Pratika parato, e paratis kaparata, e pratakatea, velekete korotos, tilidi tilidi kalamade, kaya parateka tika papaya. Deliver that one from going down the pit. Deliver that one from going down destruction. Because I found the ransom. The ransom is the blood. The ransom is the blood. The ransom is the blood. And I found the ransom. I found the ransom. I found the ransom. For the ransom is the blood. I have a ransom. I found the ransom. The ransom is the blood. Paratatata. I have a ransom. I found the ransom. The ransom is the blood. Makatekete kotoko toko. I have a ransom. I found the ransom. The ransom is the blood. Shakata. I found the ransom. I have a ransom. The ransom is the blood. Hey, hey, hey. That is the blood. The ransom, the ransom, the ransom, the ransom is the blood. Makateke teke toko. He speaks a better thing than the blood of Abel. Is the blood. I have a ransom. I found a ransom. The ransom is the blood. Oh my God. I deliver you tonight from going down the pit. I deliver you tonight from going down destruction. I deliver your finances from going down tonight. I deliver your family from going down tonight. And every wickedness surrounding itself in your family. Every wickedness around in itself in your destiny. Every wickedness, wickedness, wicked men, wicked women, wicked altars against your family, against your destiny. Tonight I conquer them by the blood. I dismantle them by the blood. I judge them by the blood. In the name of Jesus. <laughs>